The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. My question, Mr. Speaker, is for the Premier. Yesterday, I was happy to attend a rally for a $15 minimum wage at the office of the Minister of Labour. And speaker after speaker there made the one clear, repeated point that yesterday's 55 cent increase in the minimum wage is not enough for anyone to live on. Even if they, they bring in equivalent increases as are planned over the next two years, minimum wage workers in Nova Scotia in those two years' time will still be making less than minimum wage workers make in Ontario and Alberta today. At 11.55, our minimum wage is ninth out of 13 Canadian jurisdictions. Why does the Premier think that people in Nova Scotia can afford to work for so much less than everybody else? The Honourable Premier. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank Gentleman for the questions. You know, we're using the uh, formula that was put in place by his government when they were in power, Mr. Speaker. We continue to follow that. Uh, but this particular time, Mr. Speaker, we increased it uh, more than what that formula would have allocated for. We see the minister has also announced there will be a similar increase next year. Uh, that is one component, Mr. Speaker, of how we support. Uh, Nova Scotia, low-income families across the province, basic personal exemption, uh, Mr. Speaker, is on a sliding scale. Uh, those who require our support the most when it comes to the inco income tax bracket are getting it, Mr. Speaker. Uh, same time, the rent subs that we've increased to nine so that we can provide an affordable option of, of living for low-income Nova Scotians to look at not just, uh, Mr. Speaker, their paycheck, Mr. <coughs> Speaker, but also look at how can we support them through the entire uh, living experience uh, in Nova Scotia. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, the, the, low, uh, the, the low income personal exemption that the Premier speaks of uh, brings to the average person filing uh, taxes a, a benefit of $13 a month. To move from $11.55 minimum wage to $15 uh, minimum wage would change one's income by $550 a month. Uh, I'm not the, the most brilliant mathematician in the world, but I can even do that in my head. Uh, that's uh, $537 monthly. Mr. Speaker, yesterday's 55 cent increase, uh, it doesn't even make us the highest in the Maritimes. That's PEI, which, by the way, continues to have the region's highest projected economic growth. And there's a reason for that, because economic growth isn't possible unless ordinary people have some money in their pocket they can spend. So I want to ask the Premier, how can our economy in Nova Scotia generate the spending we need in order to move out of being the poorest province in Canada when the government has us stuck at 11-something? The Honourable Premier. Speaker, the, the success of Prince Edward Island, Mr. Speaker, is no government has had to follow a new Democratic Party government in BEI, Mr. Speaker. That's been kind of their success. Uh, Mr. Speaker, after we, Mr. Speaker, dug ourselves out of a $600 million hole uh, in 2013, we continue, Mr. Speaker, to make the investments, ensuring that we follow the formula that was set out by the Democratic Party when it comes to raising the minimum wage, except this particular time, Mr. Speaker, we've increased it by 55 cents. Minister of Finance has also indicated, Mr. Speaker, that it will be another increase of 55 cents. We continue to make sure that we reduce the basic personal exemption. We look at how do we provide rent subs. How do we continue to deal with the issue, Mr. Speaker, of affordability? As he would also know when he was in power, he saw power rates skyrocket under their leadership of the Democratic Party. Today, Nova Scotians see stability when it comes to power rates. Those are all positive ways, Mr. Speaker, as we continue to work uh, with the one issue that the honourable member is focused on, which is the minimum wage, is more helpful than I believe for low-income families that we look at all the myriad of options that we can help them with the expenses of living. The honourable leader of the New Democratic Party, Mr. Speaker, the the Premier touts the credentials of his government in the area of economics, but. In my view, the, the real outstanding economists in Nova Scotia today aren't anyone in the, in the government or anyone in the banks. They're, they're rather the, the people who, through resourcefulness and hard work and, and their wits, manage most of the time to more or less get by, although they're not making any more than 11, 12, or 13 something an hour. Not one of those people thinks that we're going to seriously be able to address having the lowest median income in our country with a minimum wage of 11 something. And not one of them thinks either that this change is going to uh, make an appreciable difference in their spending power. I want to ask the Premier, does he think it's fair that so many people are having today to live in Nova Scotia on 11.55? The Honourable Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank uh, the Honourable for the question again. He's focused on one aspect, Mr. Speaker, the support we provide mm -hmm. to low-income no, low Nova Scotians. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell him uh, there are a myriad of options on how we continue to provide stability for families in this province. 
I would also want to tell the Honourable Member the most important thing that we can do uh, for all citizens of this province is continue to grow the economy and provide good jobs. Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is there are more people working in Nova Scotia than ever before in our history today, Mr. Speaker. Unemployment is an all-time low, Mr. Speaker. Those are all positive signs. We're helping, Mr. Speaker, lift Nova Scotians into success, allowing them to charge their own destiny, providing them a job opportunity, growing the economy, Mr. Speaker, letting them see their hopes for themselves. He should celebrate the fact that more young people, for the first time for three consecutive years, Mr. Speaker, more young people are staying in this province and leaving. Those are all good signs. Uh, Speaker, is, there more, is there more work to do, Mr. Speaker? Of course there is, and we're going to continue to, continue to work uh, with those Nova Scotians to make sure that everyone sees themselves and sees their future here in this province.